This is all of our Zombicide second edition, and today we are gonna see if we can get all of this into only the bottom two boxes. So stay tuned. Hi, and welcome to Dats Gaming Denmark. My name is Klaus, and as you can see, this is a lot of boxes and takes up a lot of storage space. So, how are we gonna get all of this into two boxes? Well, to do that, we need a little help, which I have over here. So let me go fetch it. So before we look into the box, let me just tell about how I found this solution. So I went through YouTube videos, Reddit posts, and a lot of forum posts on BoardGameGeek to find out how to organize all of these boxes into a smaller storage footprint. But in the end, whatever I came by, all ended up just being tossed everything into the box or smaller containers with the risk of breaking your tokens, boards or miniatures. And that was until I came upon custom made 3D printed inserts for the games. In the end, after I checked a lot of stuff on Etsy and Tinkerverse, I found a German company called Tinkering Paws that make custom inserts for big Kickstarter games. And what I have here in the box is a 3D printed version of their all-in a storage solution for Zombicide second edition. So let's get the camera over here and move the stuff away and take a look at the actual inserts. So before we go take a look at the custom inserts from Tinkering Paws, I just want to show you one of the main problems with the core boxes as well as the expansions. So this is the insert from the core box, but the expansion boxes have the same kind of inserts. And if we open it up, you can see here that everything is already pretty crammed together. So all the cards are lying over here, but they don't not really have enough space for them. So they will shuffle around in the um, in this insert if you flip it over or if you have to transport. And I know that of course all of this is done. Of course, all the cards was packed in uh, plastic wrap when this was shipped. And I am aware that these pretty big plastic inserts here are for shipping purposes to ensure that nothing breaks while shipping and uh, transporting it as well as storing it. But as you can see, this mold uh, injected plastic here makes room for every single survivor as well as the zombies. But it also requires a lot of air beneath to ensure that everything can be stuck or that it snucks all the way to the end and the top here while shipping. And all of this MTR here is what we can actually utilize to make a more compact storage solution. So let's go take a look at how Tinkering Paws have actually accomplished that. So here we have the three different types of inserts that you get from Tinkering Paws. First off, we have these small trays here, and all of this has been printed on colored filament. And I have just chosen black. You can choose, I think it's 16 different colors of filament. And this is just for your dice, your tokens, etc. Noise tokens and such in the game. Very nice. Just put it on the board while you're playing and you have everything at hand. The next tray type are for the cards. They come in two different sizes. One is, of course, for all the big cards like your survivor ID cards and your campaign cards and you actually get one additional let me just get it one additional of these and that is to ensure that you can sleeve all your cards in game sleeves up to 100 microns and of course other than for the big cards we also have for the small cards here and one very nice feature is that you can actually also print these small dividers also in plastic that shows you the different type of cards and you just stuck them in here and you have exactly what it is. So these are for all the different expansions like Fort Hendrix, Washington ZC, etc. And then the last type of tray, it's what actually does that I recommend and prefer the inserts from Tinkering Paw over some of the other stuff I've seen. And it is this kind of rail system here. So what it does is it allows you to store all your miniatures in these rails by slotting in the bases in the top and bottom rails here. And that allows you to store them without hitting each other um, so that they don't break and you can actually store a lot of miniatures in very little space. So let me show you how this works. Let me get a couple of miniatures. So here we have a couple of runners from the game. And what you do is you will just slide them in here. And the other one will go in, if I can get to zero, in the button slot here.
and this, if you turn them correctly, allows you to store the miniatures side by side. And there is 11 rails on each side and they can go up to 5 meters in height, in height, which means that you only need two of these trays to store all the miniatures from the full campaign, including everything in the reboot box. This is very, very neat and allows you to store all the miniatures in a very little footprint. Hey, just a small comment here from the editing room. I can see that I said that all the miniatures can be stored in only two of these rail containers. That is incorrect, it is actually five. But there is only two of these big rails, and then there is a smaller one for all the fatties, and two separate rail systems for the abominations. But let's go back to the video. So that's the different kinds of trays. Now I will move everything from my boxes over to these trays, and then I will come back and show you if I succeeded in fitting everything into only two boxes. So. Everything has been moved over and I will give a fair warning. This took me over two hours to organize everything and get everything inserted into the boxes. So doing this a late night as I did is a very bad idea. But let's take a look at how it actually looks. And yes, I got everything into these two boxes. So first off, we have the normal core box. And if we open it up, we can see that we here have stored all the things. So this is not meant for the cards, I'm just using it because I haven't sleeved the cards. Uh, you can store the cards here and then you have everything uh, combined, else you can have them in one of the smaller card containers. So over here we have uh, parts of the abominations, the rest are here. We have all the fatties and all the rest of the zombies, including the daily stretch goals from the Kickstarter campaign. And over here we have all the survivors together with the special characters for the expansions. And I am back again here from the editing room with another comment. So if you look at the footage that we have of the box, you will see that one of the rails are empty. This is not due to additional space in the rail, but actually because the shooters from my Fort Hendrix expansion at the moment is at my paint table being painted up with some contrast paints. Another note, you will see that there is actually a single slot left when you put all the miniatures from the Kickstarter into these inserts. And I have used that additional space for the miniature fill that came together with the Army Painter paint set for Zombicide Second Edition. But uh, let's get back to the videos. We have all the character cards over here, and we have part of the notes for the campaign for the expansions here. And if you sleeve the cards, they will fill both sides. But this is all the plastic and some of the cards, and let's go take a look at the other box. So the other box is the reboot box, and inside this one, we have of course all the manuals for the core game, Washington ZC, the reboot box with the rules for the daily unlocks, and the Fort Hendrix campaign rules, as well as the two campaign sheet blocks for the two expansions. We have the small rule set for the presidential box and the Danny Trejo box. And then inside here we have all the small cards with these uh, card dividers, like this one I showed for Washington ZC, so that it's easy to find abominations, zombies, equipment, etc. We have this tray with all the lights and I have some of my extra dice, as you can see here. I have quite a lot of additional dice. Then we have all our player boards and underneath we have the tiles and these are from both expansions and the core game, nothing else under the tiles. So over here we have our time of day tiles for the expansions and all our card tokens. We have a small dice tray here with the normal dice and the all out dice. Then we have the rest of the campaign note cards and then we have two trays below here. So first is, I don't know if you can see, but these are all the different PIM crates and objectives as well as the doors and the spawn tokens. And below that we have a tray with all the picks, the colored rings for your characters, the first player marker, the exit and all the noise tokens. And the good thing is that these trays can just go directly on the board while you play and you have everything sort out this slot here is actually so you can split up the picks in uh, by color into uh, evenly sized. 
but as you can see we succeed in getting everything into the boxes so there we have it that was all the content of all the boxes that are showed in the introduction moved into only two boxes this is gonna save up a lot of store space as we more than half the total amount of space needed to store everything i do really love this insert from uh, tinkering paws and i'm gonna put a link to their site uh, down in the, in the video description if we look at the boxes yes this one is a bit open which it probably will be and the same goes here about half to a whole centimeter but white uh, weight wise this one is about the same as the normal core box while this is a bit heavier as we moved all the cardboard into it i think this is probably the best storage solution i have found for some size thing edition and i'm very happy that i've been able to get all of my game down into these two boxes so that I can store everything together and it's even easier to set up because now I have everything in specific trays that I can just put out to the table. So that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoy it and if you have any comments please write them in the comment section below or go join our Discord channel. Also if you enjoyed the video please, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss when we upload new videos. It is highly appreciated. But that's all for today. Take care.